All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and today we're going to be doing Simplex 4010 Test 27, a request test by DJ. DJ is the one who sold me the Simplex 4010 and the SK5208 panels at an amazing price, along with a couple other devices, so give a shout out to him for helping me build this little empire to what it has become. So, if we do take a step back, it is going to be a pretty Simplex type system. That being said, going down over here is the FCI MS2 Dual Action Lift and Pull Pull Station. Going up, this is the Simplex 4903 9431 4 wire True Alert Horn Strobe. This is set at March time and 15 candela. Over here we have a Simplex 4903 9426 4 wire True Alert Horn Strobe, but the strobe on this is dead, but it will still be doing March time horn and this is fast march time coming down over here we have the cybers pyrotronics ms151 single action pull station under the stopper with the horn maybe turned off and then going come on stopper there we go and then if we do come over here we have something new that not a lot of people have but a Gamewell M46-28 Century, but the key locking version. So the way that this works is, let me get my CAT60 key. It takes the standard CAT60 Gamewell key. So you put it in and you open this top part, and then the pull station just opens. There's no locking screw. I mean, you can have one, but it doesn't come with one. And then the lift plate or the lock locking plate actually just screws onto the back as a uh, added back plate. I want to get the other plate that makes the Century a dual action pull station. I've seen them out in the field but I really want to own one where there's a bar here that says lift. You lift that and then you pull but this is the key locking version. Pretty ugly, pretty big but hey if you need something that key locks it works. And then going up is a 4903, I want to say 9113, um, remote strobe 15 candela. I'll go grab the model number for you right now. That is a 4903, oh, 9331. Okay, I was kind of close. But, you know. And then, oh, I brought paper over. I just remembered I needed to do that. We will be smoking testing the detector in there yeah I got enough paper so we'll be doing that as well but to start I think we will begin with the FCI MS2 and here we go lift and ow pull So alarms have been silenced, and what you're hearing is the same exact alarms and coding that are in my school. And if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know that I said there would be a story time in this video. Oops. And there will be about how my high school caught on fire two weeks ago. Um, so that will, we'll have a little story time at the end of the video, but we'll do alarms first. Alrighty. So, panel is resetting, strobes continue to flash because they are four wire devices and the strobe circuit is on the sink. So you can actually see, I wonder if the camera will pick it up. You can see that the uh, LED is kind of turning off right as the strobe flashes. Because the way these work, um, if you have the devices set on sync, is the strobe will only fire as soon as the power is removed. So you have to, it basically charges up and then as soon as there, there's any little cut in the power, the strobe will flash. So that's why you'll see the LEDs, because I have them on my one of my NACs, you'll see them 
flash in time with the strobes. Not because there's a current draw, but that's because that's how the panel actually works. It cuts the power and that's what syncs everything. So let's go ahead and pull the MS-151. So lift and pull. So we'll go ahead and acknowledge that. And actually, I want you to hear how hard the panel's working, or at least I'm gonna try and get you to hear how hard the panel's working. I'm going to do the test switch, maybe, and let you hear the relay in the panel doing march time. can't hear it but it's going it clicks pretty loud on um, the camera's just not picking it up you leave that there and then we'll come over here and reset the pull pretty easy reset oops that was anticlimactic there it goes okay and then we just put the cover back on and close and then just for fun, we will do the stopper station. So lift and push. put a reset in. So you can see we have the hall pull activated, the panel key test activated, and the stopper station activated. So we'll go ahead and let that start to reset. And we wait. We actually go ahead and get the door ready. Awesome. And let's go pull at Gamewell Station. Here we go. And pull. And then we will reset. I'll actually use the Cat 60 key from the enunciator just because it's easier. It's less keys I have to worry about. So to reset, you know, you open it up, you put the switch back down to normal, you lift the top plate, and close it right back down. And then we will go ahead and put a system reset in the panel. All right. See it says system reset in progress. And we just wait now for the panel to reset fully. And then we will go ahead and smoke test a detector in the back room. Wait, wait, strobes keep flashing. Awesome. Reset the door, and again, don't try what I am about to do at home. Let's get some paper burning. It'll come on later. It's got so much gas in it.
I try these things before I go to do a video and they work and then it's like it knows as soon as I start recording to stop working. There we go. Let's hope that's enough smoke. So that was great. My phone uh, decided to randomly fill up. Uh, so that was great. I was not expecting that to happen. So sorry about that. Alarms are still continuing to go. Strobe in here does flash. Door closed on us. And we'll go ahead and silence and put a reset in. And we can go ahead, we'll take my fire alarm inventory and fan out the smoke in here. Really need to get some compressed air, but this works fine. All right. All righty, oops. So, story time. I am sitting in class and, you know, it's towards the end of the month and the fire alarm goes off, which is true alerts on March time on a Simplex 4100U panel. And we're thinking, oh, you know, it's a fire drill. So, you know, we don't have the most urgency. We're right by exit and we always make it out in our a lot of time. So we're walking pretty normally. And all of a sudden members of the school's crisis team come running out screaming, this is a real fire, get out of the building. So we all start running out, and as we're going down, we can see that sprinkler heads have activated downstairs. And we're like, because I was up on the second floor, and we're like, oh my God, what's happening? So long story short, after standing outside for about an hour while the fire department came in, they actually had to bring in hoses and extinguish the fire. And then, because it was so terrible outside, um, it was freezing and raining and terrible the fire department declared the gym which was on the complete opposite side of the building to be a safe space for us to shelter in place and we were able to get the entire school in the gym with the fire alarm still going because apparently they didn't know about the silent feature on the panel so we're sitting in the gym with the crisis team trying to explain what's happening with the fire alarms blaring and long story short we finally get released after about an hour and a half because um, this was right at it was like 10 minutes before the school day was supposed to end on a Friday. And what happened was there had been a piece of plastic that had been pushed up against one of the kilns in the ceramics room. And the plastic caught on fire from getting so hot by the kiln. And the plastic then started because it was in a it was in a storage room. And the plastic started catching the counters and cabinets in there on fire and then the whole roof caught on fire in the first floor and activated like five sprinkler heads. And uh, so two art rooms were lost in the fire, but everybody was safe, no injuries, and just some property damage. So that was, um, was kind of fun. Got to really see the fire alarm system in action, which was nice. Everything worked, which was good. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, have a wonderful day.